said, I met the most capable person, and I believe he's going to be a president of China someday. That was 40 years before, and uh, lo and behold, so when I became president, I took him out. I said, you just set the record. You know, he's the longest serving governor in the history of the country, and not just of the state, but of all states, 24 years or something like that. I said, you've broken the record. How about doing the following? Why don't you become ambassador to China? You'll be friendly with President Xi. That makes sense to me and all that. And he did. He did a very good job. But because of that, Kim Reynolds was the lieutenant governor. She became governor. And that was fine with me. Then she was, an election was coming up. And generally speaking, when people get put into a position like that, they lose in politics for whatever reason. It's like if you look back at the history books, when a governor appoints himself senator, which happens, they very rarely win. I think they almost never win because people don't like that. But she was uh, now she was the governor and doing nicely. She was doing fine. Yeah, it was uh, not that not that difficult. This state is not that difficult, and it's a great state with great people. But she became the uh, governor, and then she called me. She had a big problem. She was running against a very wealthy man, I believe, a farmer, handsome man. They said handsome, good-looking, wealthy, had everything, a uh, Democrat, and he was way up in the polls, and he was going to win. And I came in, I did a big rally, I did a big endorsement of her, I fought like hell, and she ended up winning, right? Yeah. And then the second time was much easier, but uh, I also kept you in the position of first. You were first in the nation, yeah. which I didn't have to do. So I did all these things, and then I spoke to him uh, about, you know, four or five months ago, whatever. And uh, she said, I'd like to remain neutral. I said, you'd like to, I'd like to remain neutral too. I didn't have to come here and do rallies for you. And she said, what do you mean? Well, because we're first in the nation, I'd like to remain neutral. I said, I'm the one that kept you first in the nation. She said, well, I, it's, you know, because of that though, I'd like to remain neutral. I'd like to be able to go and really uh, politic and work with all of the candidates. I said, all of the candidates are running against me. That doesn't sound like so good. And it wasn't a quid pro quo, as they used to say in the impeachment hoax number one, which there were none except with them. They had the quid pro quo. They're the ones that cheated. We didn't cheat at all. But, you know, she said, uh, I think I'd like to be able to campaign with everybody. I said, so you're actually telling me that you want to be able to campaign with everybody because you're first in the nation. I'm the one that made you first in the nation. And I would have done it anyway, but I would have done it anyway. And I said, all right, that's a very shocking thing, but you don't have to ever, I wouldn't, you know, she's not here, I wouldn't have her here. So uh, that's the way it is. So then she goes, and she goes, and I read where she's going to support Ron DeSanctimonious, who's, who's like 50 points, who in the nation is like 50 points down and very substantially down here. And people have found out he's got no personality, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, when I, after all the things I did, then he said, Essentially, he said, I have no comment. Are you going to run against the president? He said, I have no comment. When he says he has no comment, that means he's running. So I said, I said, if you're running, oh, he's running. And my people, these geniuses all over the room, they said, sir, you shouldn't hit him. He's a Republican. I said, I don't care if he's a Republican. And we hit him rather hard. And he went down. He went down like all the others. So he went down. And it was one of those things. But she said she's going to endorse him because he worked very hard. Now, how do you endure somebody that's 40 or 50 points down? There's got to be something there. So I'm not, now I, I can only tell you this, and, and I have nothing, I mean, that was her choice to do this, but I believe in loyalty. Uh, yeah. I didn't say I'm going to do this. I don't care if she endorses me or not. It's not going to make any difference because the only endorsement that matters is the Trump endorsement. I hate to say it. But, but when somebody does that, uh, that's a lack of loyalty. And my people all told me, sir, don't bring up a story like that because I'm just doing this now because you're sort of, we're all working for the same thing. We want to win this election. We're going to take back our country. But they said, sir, people don't care about loyalty. I said, I think they do. And I've been right because here's what happened. Six, seven months ago, she was the most popular governor in the country. Do you know where she is now? Last. She went from most popular governor in the country to the least popular, and he's right down to the bottom too. So she went from the most, and I was even surprised to see this, but she went from the most popular governor in the nation to the least popular governor in the nation. Same chart, same poll, very respected, everything else. It's shocking. 
But look, I wish her well. I mean, to me, I got along with her great. I did a lot for you. You're safe with your, you know, all your breakage, all your floods. You had so many floods I've never seen. I think you had record floods. We took care of, we took care of Iowa better than any president ever, including the ethanol. But uh, all of the problems that you were having with the heavy rain and the heavy falls and the breaking dams and everything else, we took care of everything. So you really like to be shown some support when that happens right i don't think that's i don't think that's abnormal and i mean she's supporting a guy that fought ethanol he fought your social security he fought medicare you know he wanted to raise uh, social security up to 70 and he fought against social security but he also fought ethanol because that's very personal to you and he fought it very hard and he frankly he fought the farmers the farm bills and everything else i did just the opposite by the way with china I got the farmers $28 billion from China. I went to Sonny Perdue, the uh, Secretary of Agriculture, our Secretary of it did a good job. I said, Sonny, the farmers in our country have been treated very badly by China. You all, most of you that are in the business know that. And I said, what kind of damage have they done over the last four, five, six years? And he came back the following day, he said, uh, about $28 billion. I said, Okay, China's going to pay him. And I took it out of the tariffs. I gave the farmers. Any farmer here get checks from me? Because, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of jobs, too. Remember I said to everybody, because the farmers were very loyal, they stuck. I said, you know, we're going to go through a nasty process with China. They're not going to want to buy. They're not going to all of the different things. I said, we're going to go through this process. Just be loyal. We're going to win. But you have to stay loyal. And... They were unbelievable. I watched, uh, as I think NBC Today Show, if you can believe it. I don't know what I was watching it for. But they interviewed a farmer, and, and he was having a hard time. During the administration, very beginning, he said, no, but President Trump is doing right. China stopped buying. And we made one of the greatest deals. But I don't talk about it because of COVID. I talk about USMCA. That's Mexico, Canada. I talk about the deal with Japan, the deal with South Korea. The, I don't even talk about the China deal, but China deal is probably the best of all. They have to buy $50 billion worth of our product. But I gave the farmers of our country $28 billion. And I said early on, because I knew we were going to win the, the negotiation. It wasn't even that tough, frankly. But nobody else did it. Bush didn't do it, and Obama didn't do it. Nobody cared. Nobody fought for the farmer. I fought for the farmer. But they didn't do it. I knew we were going to win, but I said, you got to remain tough. you got to remain solid. And they were so unbelievable. The farmers were so incredible. He said, President Trump is doing the right thing. I mean, I, we're hurting right now, but he's doing the right thing. We have to stick with him. And all of a sudden, the dam broke, and we uh, made an unbelievable deal, and we gave you $28 billion. And I, I say, sometimes I say it a little bit flippant, and they said, please don't say that. Please, sir, my people, please. I said, listen. We're going to win Iowa. Well, how do you know, sir? Because I got him $28 billion for the farmers. I'll be flippant. I mean, maybe you'll have an upset. Who the hell else? Biden doesn't even know what a farmer is. Biden. Can you imagine Biden laying in bed at night, tossing and turning, thinking about how he's going to screw China for $28 billion for the farmers? I don't think he's going to be doing that, right? Sweating, sweating at night. No, he's a sound sleep. They gave him his milk and they put him to bed. He doesn't give it to So anyway, so uh, we did a great job for you and I appreciate it. Listen, 